First of all, can I get your reaction to the ECB bond buying program? Well, it's obviously a very welcome development. It is important that the ECB plays its role to ensure stability of the euro market. And I think that yesterday's decision is the right decision at the right time. Will it encourage Spain to, to borrow more, to issue more debt? Because that's the big question right now. Uh, in the past, obviously, countries have been punished uh, for racking up huge amounts of debt. Uh, but many would argue now is the time to do this. Uh, are you therefore going to take advantage of what the ECB is doing? Does it kind of give you the ability to issue more debt at this point to fund your economy? Well, for the moment, what it has provided is stability. Today, we had a, an auction of Spanish sovereign debt, and the reaction of the markets has been very positive. We issued 5 billion euros. We had over 10 billion, almost 11 billion demand. The interest rates have gone down. We are around 0.7 percent for the 10-year bond. So for the moment, I think that the action of the ECB has provided the needed and appropriate stability to take the right decisions. Last week, due to the reinforcement of containment measures in our country, we started to see uh, an impact which was quite significant in terms of the economic and social uh, movement, and dynamism of the country. And we need to be able to take the right decisions in an environment which does not generate more instability, volatility and action, uh, anxiety you know, at the end of the day. Do you worry, though, that further down the road, if Spain decides that it does issue now, that it does spend now, that there will come a point where actually Spain ends up being punished for, for what it does now, but significantly further down the road? Maybe in a year's time, when the situation has stabilized, uh, Spain ends up with a significant debt load, uh, a much greater debt load than it has now, and as a result of which the financial markets turn around uh, and say, you know what, we're not comfortable with this, and as a result of which there is a cost of what is happening. Well, we absolutely need to avoid that that happens, because this is a global challenge. It is a global disease. The impact on our societies and our economies is also global. And we need to provide global responses. We need a coordinated response of all the, the countries. And obviously, in Europe, we need a European response. National governments are doing their part. We are adopting the right measures to address the different challenges. The ECB has done its part. And now we need to think about a global uh, European fiscal response to ensure that, of course, that risk that you're putting on the table does not materialize. Um, we're just uh, hearing, Minister, that the Bank of England is coming out with another rate cut. It's going to cut another 15 basis points. That will take the rate in the UK to 0.1. Do you think the ECB can do more as well? Well, we need to use the right instruments for the right time. Uh, I don't want to um, question the decisions of the ECB. I, I am quite uh, certain that they have considered all the options and decided against uh, reducing interest rates. There may be margin there, but maybe they thought this was not the right moment to do that. Instead, they have moved to liquidity uh, and guarantee that the uh, sovereign debt market is going to be stable. And I absolutely think this was the right decision to take last night. It was very timely also because we were having uh, these big issues today. And I think this is going to provide stability, as I was saying, for all of us to focus on the top priority, which is addressing as soon as possible the health crisis. Of course, we are also taking measures to avoid that there are structural effects in terms of job losses or uh, company closures that may have a more structural effect because we want the Spanish economy to kickstart as soon as the health crisis is over and to resume as soon as possible the growth path on which we were until the crisis hit us. So what are those things that you have to do to ensure that? Well, we have adopted a, a significant package this week, including a number of measures to support the most vulnerable parts of, of society. But on the economic front, two main measures. One is up to 100 billion guarantees to ensure that the financial sector continues to provide liquidity, refinancing, and new credit to all companies in our economy so that the economy continues to go on in these exceptional circumstances. And secondly, additional flexibility so that companies can adjust their activity and, and their workforce 
through short-term job schemes which will be subsidized by the public sector. All in all, uh, the measures that we have adopted uh, would amount to around 5 billion extra expenditure for one month. And uh, as I said before, up to one billion, 100 billion of, of public guarantees. We hope that together with the financial sector, we would be able to mobilize, if needed, up to 200 billion of liquidity for the whole economy. So part of being able to model what you need to do has to do with what kind of recession you're expecting. Can you give me some insight into how you even approach understanding what kind of recession Spain might see in the second quarter? Well, as I was saying a moment ago, the starting point of the different countries is not the same. So Spain was having quite robust growth until this crisis hit us. We were foreseeing, everybody was foreseeing our country to grow around 1.6% this year, 1.5% next year. And this is a starting point where we were until the end of February. Now we are in a, inside the shock. We are dealing with the health crisis as efficiently as possible. And we would like this shock to be as short as possible. And what we are doing is everything that's needed and possible to make sure that there are no structural uh, effects in terms of, in terms of massive uh, dismissals, job losses, uh, company closures. We, we need to keep the activity going at a lower pace, of course, because we're asking people to stay at home. We're asking some companies must be closed, some shops will be closed. So the activity rate cannot be the same that we were expecting before the, the, the shock. But we wanted to continue to run at a rhythm that allows us to kickstart as soon as possible and resume dynamic growth, the one we were on just before the crisis hit. Do you think, Minister, that we are going to see a recession in Spain? Well, you know, it's too early to, to know. Uh, when, when, when we started to see the coronavirus hitting us, a lot of people were estimating the potential impact to be very low, frankly. It was below between 0.5% and 1%. And at that time, I said we need to be extremely prudent with forecasting because we don't know the depth and the length of the crisis. Likewise, right now, I think that, you know, I'm not wasting a lot of energy in forecasting. We're wasting our energy and focusing our energy in dealing as soon as possible with the health crisis and trying to minimize the potential structural impact on our economy so that we, as soon as possible, can be uh, back on the growth path. Just in terms of what kind of a bounce back you are expecting, the Prime Minister, Mr. Sanchez, was talking about a very strong recovery. Is that what we get? Uh, the Spanish economy obviously has many aspects to it. Tourism is, tourism is one of them. Do you think people will come back quickly? Uh, do you think businesses will recover quickly? And I'm just kind of curious uh, as to how strongly you think the Spanish economy will bounce back, or you think it will be something a little bit more gradual? Well, what we're seeing is that the crisis or the, the, the health crisis is hitting the economy through different ways and means. No? At the beginning, we were quite worried about industry stopping because of the or breaking of the international production chains because of the closure of China and the lack of supplies. This was our first worry. Then the second worry was, of course, the tourist sector. It's very important for the Spanish economy. And so all the different containment measures that were taken around the world were already reducing activity in that sector. The additional containment measures we have taken last weekend are also going to slow down that sector. And we, we are focusing now also a lot not only on domestic demand, but on the stability of financial markets. Because if the volatility yep. that we have seen in stock markets is then transmitted to other markets, to bond markets and sovereign bond markets, then we would be facing a very different sort of crisis. And that's why I think the, the decision taken yesterday by the ECB provides the necessary calmness and stability to sovereign debt markets for all of us to deal with this as fast as possible. Final quick question, Minister. When do you think the virus will peak? How long do you think businesses in Spain are going to have to be in lockdown? Well, the measures that we have adopted are foreseen to last for one month. This, of course, can be extended if needed, but this is the, the, the spread of time or the, the time that we have foreseen for the additional flexibility for companies and the exceptional measures that we're taking also to reinforce the most vulnerable parts of our society, etc. Of course, this can be extended if we think that the situation is going to be prolonged uh, longer or beyond that date. The exceptional containment measures that we declared on Saturday, the alarm uh, state, are foreseen to last for 15 days. 
can be extended for additional uh, periods if needed. But this is the, the time span on which we're working and the scenario on which we're working at this stage when it comes to the economic measures that we have had to adopt uh, in, the, in the past days.